All right. Well, it's that time, and uh, I just want to say thank you guys so much uh, for watching, um, viewing the articles on Deep Dish Football. Um, again, this uh, November 27th is my last day on Deep Dish Football. In the morning, I'm, I'm in the morning, it'll be shutting down. Uh, just a quick reminder that DeepDishFootball.com will still be going. Uh, not going, going. It, there's not going to be nothing new. But the watch list will be up there. So if college coaches need to take a look, they'll take a look. Um, the articles will still be up there for interviews. But mostly everything's shutting down. Facebook shutting down. Uh, Twitter's will be up. My personal thing will be private. And, uh, yeah, but thank you guys so much uh, for a wonderful, what is it? Oh, <laughs> seven years, seven years, unbelievable. But thank you guys so much, and I hope you guys got enjoyed and entertaining. Just remember, recruiting is free. Do not pay for a recruiting service, and watch out for the scammers. So, But thank you guys so much for listening, watching, um, trying to read my shitty articles, but thank you guys so much. Have a great, uh, great uh, holiday season. Happy Thanksgiving, and... Uh, Thank you guys so much for watching and listening and reading. Thank you. Good morning, IHSA football family. It is the final video games of the weeks, the second to final video when I say goodbye, of the state finals 2023 and what we got some good games Thursday, I'm sorry, Friday and Saturday. Uh, my name is Coach Big Pete, a.k.a. Peter the publisher of Deep Dish Football. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Uh, from my family to yours, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following and all this other stuff. Uh, just uh, some quick little tidbits of information. Um, Deep Dish Football Live today, uh, 4 p.m., last show ever. Uh, do page run and shoot later that night. It's going to be published with my co-host, Patrick Cotto, of Naperville Community Access Television, who, by the way, does a wonderful job. And again, um... I'm gonna. I won't be on the show next year, but he is continuing the show, the DuPage Run and Shoot Show. That's a promise. He is a hell of a reporter for Naperville Community Access Television, um, and he's gonna continue to do a good job. Now, if you guys saw this video in a little bit of the beginning, there's the video of me saying salute. Um, and I got and literally I put this video up again yesterday, and people, oh, I. I told you, when I came back in February, I said this was, I'm only doing it for a year. One year shot. And um, I said I was going to try to find someone, couldn't find anyone. Um, especially with the people that I talked to, it was about, it was mostly about their money. Uh, charging a subscription fee or charging their services to help kids and everything. And again, I say this numerous times to people, deepdishfootball.com. It was no, not that is was free, and it's done. It's completely done. November twenty seventh is the last day in the morning, so I'm just gonna keep saying that again. I, I told you guys in February I was coming back for one year, and again the publisher that was gonna take over, who I absolutely respect, childhood friend. He, he couldn't do him because he had a young kid on the way, and I completely understand. And again, this business is a fucking dirty business. It's dirtier than ever. And oh, even before this, when the job that I took over to go up to northern Michigan uh, in the winter, it was dirty then. It became even more dirty. NILs, the transfer portal, it's just a fucking dirty. It's inexcusable. It's really dirty. And that's why literally done. Um, watch football on TV, that's it. So just a quick reminder about that stuff. And uh, I literally warned you guys in February that this one year, one year. And again, Twitter, thank you, by the way, for 40,000 followers on Deep Dish Football. Um, but Twitter is a fucking joke right now, too. You can't find, uh, you can find half the recruits and other half. You have to do a f fucking one hour, 90 minute search, especially small school recruits. I'm really pissed off at Elon Musk, too. <laughs> but that was no surprise. And I was coming back for only one year. And... To be honest, again, this business, greed. Greed has killed, and I and I really do believe greed is going to kill uh, high school football. And that's my personal feelings. But let's get into the thing with the state final games. I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but again, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you guys so much for following. 
I'll do. I'm gonna do one more video, and the video is gonna be a, just a big thank you and a, uh, thank you guys so much. But uh, thank you guys for listening or watching and all the other stuff. Thank you so much. It means a lot. So let's get started for the eight title games that are happening on Friday and Saturday. Well, we got some good games. And again, uh, just a quick reminder because I forgot. If you like my work, feel free to leave a tip donation via PayPal VMO link below. Um, but let's get into the 1A state title game. Lena Winslow takes on Camp Point Central in a big small school battle. With Lena Winslow, what I was expecting actually did happen, which was really shocking. Everything that they have had was shocking. A little bit shocked by the score against Chicago Hope Academy, but understand it. But everything that has been put in front of Lena Winslow, they have passed. Um, I think overall, you couldn't have asked for a better season. With Camp Point Central, I sort of felt that they were going to go undefeated. They did go undefeated. I didn't think they were going to make the state title game because they made the state title game last year. Now we get into last year, Lena Wenzel, no passes. No passes last year against Camp Point Central, which is scary. Um, I do think more the quarterback at Camp Point Central is a, he's a hell of a player, and I think that he can. I think the big thing is going to be on Camp Point Central. Can they pass the ball against Lena Wenzel? I think that's going to be the most important thing. Um, overall, Camp Point Central has. They've beaten the teams that they've needed to beat in. Um, I think the big thing was uh, the question with them going against Greenfield Northwestern. They kicked into Greenfield Northwestern's butt. Um, much respect to those to the both teams, especially Chicago Hope Academy. But overall, if we look at it, again, they have to open up the field. That's going to be the most important thing for um, uh, Camp Point Central. For Lena Wenzel, stick to what you know. Don't do anything stupid. Uh, no spe nothing special. Keep it simple. And he'll get that W, and I, I really do think that Lena Winslow comes into as the favorite. Now we get into 2A. Now 2A is interesting. We have Wilmington, the Wilmington Wildcats. Now, Coach Rentz, he's got this team always coached up. Again, they only suffered one loss that was a complete surprise to me, which was Seneca. Um, didn't see that one coming. I really did not see that one coming. Um, but they got the revenge in the playoffs. They beat Seneca. Overall, I really do believe that this Wilmington offensive line is one of the best offensive lines that Coach Rince has had. I think Kyle Farrell, Farrell, uh, Farrell is that damn good at running back. Um, with Athens, same way, same a little bit of the same ground uh, ground attack. Corey Craig has been their has been their bulldozer. He's definitely a player you got to keep an eye out for from Athens. I think again that it's going to come down to as well. As both defenses, again, can they keep under that 3.4, 3.5 yard average every rush? That's going to be the most important thing. I think this is going to be a fast-paced game. I think this game is going to be one of the fast, uh, faster games in uh, state uh, for these eight games. I really do. Um, but overall, I think the big thing for uh, Wilmington, stop Craig. For Athens, stop Farrell. And I think with the passing attack... I really like Wilmington's passing attack, um, but I think Athens is, you can give him a little, I give him a the slice advantage on the passing attack, but in this game, I really could say, hey, Wilmington's, I don't see it. I, I see this as a opening air game. Next one, Ryan, who absolutely was impressive against Montini. I really, and this is a team that I do believe is favored. But going against this Mount Carmel um, Golden Aces team has been quite impressive. Overall, the Golden Aces, I got to say this right now, um, just f I can remember from the COVID year, talking with Blaine Sisson, it was at the uh, EFT Boom Showcase. It was, uh, it was August because there was no football in 2020. And him just being very positive and about the Golden Aces team and what they can do. And just give naming some names that I should keep an eye out for. He was right, and these are a lot of uh, these. A lot of these uh, Golden Aces are quite impressive. Connor Shelby has been unbelievable offensive lineman. Um, they've got a good tall, length, few wide receiver. Blaine Sisson is the stalwart of that offense as quarterback, athletic, unbelievable. Can run with the ball, can pass with the ball. He can do everything. Again, this is a 
this is a two-team game that I, it's always a two-team game, but this is a game that I could see that again. The Golden Aces have to pass the ball. They must pass the ball. Also, they got to get take advantage of that Brian uh, pre-game jersey that we saw against Montini. Overall, with that Constantine, their fullback, you have to stop. Even the Montini defensive coaches were telling me, you, you got to stop Constantine. He's that damn good. Killed off is another player you got to keep an eye out for as well. They also have a very solid passing attack, Brian. So this is going to be a big matchup in 3A. And overall, I'm going to say this right now, I'm more excited about the small school games than the big school games. I'm, I know I'm going to get a lot of shit from some of the big schools, but I'm really excited about this game, Brian versus Mount Carmel. It's just a great start with the Golden Aces and, and Ryan as well. So definitely two teams you got to keep an eye out for. Make sure you check out the article on deepdishfootball.com. Now we get to 4 St. Lawrence, Coach Neeson's got this team, St. Lawrence, believing the Vikings. They, I it was like 44, it was 44 years. 44 years since they haven't been, since they have not been in the state finals. They are back in it. Aaron Ball, Aaron Ball, Aaron Ball. That's the most important thing for Rochester that they got to stop is Aaron Ball. Now, uh, Les, their quarterback, if they put a stop to, uh, to Ball, it's going to go to Les, no matter, no matter what. But, again... With Rochester, this defense has been just impressive. I would like to see some of the record books. This has got to be one of the more impressive Rochester defenses, to be honest with you. Very impressed. Um, Buckner at safety and a little bit of wide receiver. They have a star receiver. Uh, they, have a, they, have a, <laughs> they have a depth chart of quarterbacks, which is impressive as well. Um, but overall, in the linebacker core, which I saw, um, who's, who did they play? Cole City. It was Cole City. What the? I was, that blew me away too, with the Rochester linebackers. Um, but overall, you, you have to go with Rochester as the favorite in this game. But St. Lawrence is just a great overall story. Just an absolute unbelievable story. Eggstrom, wide receiver, and other play to keep an eye out for as well. Now we get into 5A. St. Francis takes on Nazareth Academy, the Roadrunners. Four and five going into the playoffs, getting into the finals. Unbelievable story. Coach Racky, happy as hell, uh, well-deserved. Um, and again, I feel as if <sighs> Tim Racky, I think Coach, R- I'm pro- Coach Racky, I think he is one of the most underappreciated coaches in that Chicagoland area. I really do. I think um, he does just an absolute wonderful job with this team. Um Again, new school-minded coach, uh, defensive uh, defensive mastermind as well. He does it all. And we get to, of course, the Julia Catholic, Coach Jaws. That whole crew is unbelievable. Munoz, the quarterback, has had a hell of a season. Definitely a player to check out. Adrian Washington. Um, keep a very close eye out for linebacker Beitler. He has impressed me this past week. Very impressed with this young man, Zachary uh, Beitler. Um, but overall, and H.J. H. Grisby, their offensive line, their group of linebackers, their defensive tackle, Dylan Johnson, who's an absolute stud. Um, that's going to be a key battle against that Nazareth offensive line. I really believe, in my heart of hearts, that this is another toss-up game. I don't see a favorite in this game, and I know a lot of crap, especially for my brother who's a Nazareth alum. That's why I'm cheering for Julia Catholic, so I can piss him off. But um, I think it's going to be a good game, another game to check out. Now we get into 6A, and everyone's talking about East St. Louis. St. St. Louis is going to absolutely wash the field with Kerry Grove. This game is not even going to be close. I'm going to put this game on upset alert. I'm going to hear from East St. Louis fans. Yes, I'm a dumbass. I, can, I understand. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, yes. Uh, but this K Grove team, Abrams, uh, Pure, who, who's been an unbelievable star, their offensive line. Um, again, with that op- with that option offense, it's going to be tough for East St. Louis. Last year, they got the win, and I thought that East St. Louis was actually going to win that game. They won that game last year. Two years ago, I thought East St. Louis was going to get upset. Uh, uh, it was two or three years, I thought they were going to get up- uh, get an upset. They did. They lost. I think this game's going to be real close, but I think Kerry Grove's going to edge out with a win. And if I'm wrong, I will apologize to East St. Louis and all the Flyers. Uh, and again, so I was, so I'm writing an article and I said, name one player, a couple players that, I should, that you should keep an eye out for. East St. Louis is the whole, the whole team, <laughs> to be honest with you. 
Um, but Robert Battle, that's going to be it's going to be a key on him, their quarterback. I also believe too that the defensive line of East St. Louis again they have to stay in their assignments. The whole defense has to stay in their assignments because any mistakes by that defense, Kerry Grove can capitalize. So this is going to be a game that you can check out. I'm going to talk more about this on Deep Dish Football Live uh, later today at three o'clock, four o'clock. I'm sorry, four o'clock. Apologize. Uh, we get into seven a. 7A, Mount Carmel versus DGN. What a wonderful story about Downers Grove North. This is an unbelievable story. I couldn't be more happy for Coach Harini. Um, just overall respect for the guy and um, what he's done, what he did at Highland Park and what he's done doing at DGN. This guy, again, deserves all the courts. And it, again, DGN made the best hire that they could have done. And this was... A complete revamp, remake. I think Owen Lance, who is one of the best young quarterbacks in the Midwest region. Sophomore quarterback. Charlie Cruz, oh, he's that damn good. Uh, Brescia, uh, their linebacker, another player to keep an eye out for. Or Owen Fel, uh, Fel, uh, Felon, their wide receiver. Um, I'm trying to think if there's one. Uh, no, uh, I forgot, Noah Battle. The senior running back. Absolute stalwart for that team. The star of that team. Underrated, too. But again, they, they got DuPage popping. Again, when I drive on Iden Avenue and I drive by that, you can feel the energy. They gave Mount Carmel a tough fight last year in the playoffs. They lost. They're going against the Mount Carmel team that's heavily, and I mean heavily favored. Jake Elliott. Um... Dylan Dupree, who just absolutely blew me away against that game against Batavia. Uh, wide receiver core. Oh, that's unbelievable. A secondary and defense. Parker starts. Defensive, uh, defensive line that literally will cream your quarterback. And this is going to be a game that's going to be mostly on Owen Lance. Uh, what can he produce? This is going to be this is a pressure cooker game. Um, and I think they're going to first start running the ball with Noah Battle first. Um, see a little trick plays too. And, but Mount Carmel comes to this game heavily favored, and I completely understand. Uh, Parker Gillum, their wide receiver for Mount Carmel, another player to keep an eye out for. Um, this is going to be just one of those tough games where it could either it's good, it's either going to be a slaughter for Mount Carmel, or it's going to be a tough fought. Upset win for DGN. Either which way. So, we'll see. I'm going to get shit from some DGN fans. I know it. I, I apologize. I live in Westmont. Please don't yell at me at the jewel. <laughs> but again, much respect to DGN and what they did. Um, let's go into 8A. Eight, eight and we get into 8A. Lincoln Way East versus Loyola Academy. The battle of the two big dogs coming back at each other with another battle. Wow. Um, Fitzgerald at Loyola, he has been quite impressive. They're uh, running uh, back beast. Death chart is just another impressive thing. Underrated secondary. Young group of linebackers. Young and just overall their youth explosion this year. Has been impressive for Loyola. Lincoln Way East, Caden O'Rourke, Tishner, the Geist uh, brothers. Unbelievable. Um, the wide receiver core for Lincoln Way East, stepping it up this season. Um, and I think overall, the big thing is going, and I really do believe this is how does Lincoln Way East stop? That dynamic running attack of Lyola came. I think that's going to be huge for 8A. I really do. Um, I think, again, Brent Tishner, underrated quarterback. Um, so definitely a thing that you got to check out for. I really do see, again, with this game, it's being a little bit it's more of a, a toss-up. And it was a rematch from last year. Overall, and again, both teams are undefeated. With I think the big stalwart win for uh, the big win that for Lyola Academy was that uh, the Mount Carmel win? I think that was the big win for them. Um, I think the big win for you, you could say for the Lincoln, the Lincoln Way East team was the Batavia game. Anyway, I think it was week two against Batavia when they got the big win, and 
this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be one of those very special games, and you're going to hear a lot of private schools recruit chants. <laughs> but it is what it is. It's a fun. It's going to be a fun uh, conclusion to a great 2023 season. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you guys so much for watching and reading the articles on deepdishfootball.com. Make sure you follow Coach. Well, I shouldn't even say that anymore. <laughs> Screw that. Uh, my email is coachbigpdfp at gmail.com. If you have any questions, um, if you'd like to work for you, for leave a tip donation via PayPal, the email link below. Um, Deep Dish Football Live Wednesday. Um, Wednesday. This afternoon, um, 4 p.m., do Patreon shoot show with my co host. Uh, season finale will be published later that night, much later, because YouTube is usually a pain in my ass. But thank you guys so much for joining. Um, and again, you guys make Deep Dish Football. I really don't. You guys do. Thank you guys so much for joining. Hopefully you enjoyed the movies and all this other stuff. Um, recruiting seminar uh, video is still on YouTube. Check it out if you want to. Visit deepdishfootball.com. My email is coachbigpetefp at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much. And have a lovely, lovely Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving from my family to yours. Mm-hmm.